Stay tuned for my top 10 MCU Marvel Legends of 2021. And spoiler alert, it's none of these. Hello and welcome back to the channel, Dan Who Reviews. As always, my name is Dan W. Make sure you are following me on Instagram at it's Dan Who. And remember, you can now hit that join button and become a channel member as well. Quite simply, show some love or join the members club. Much, much appreciated. And Happy New Year 2022 is here. So it's that time where we look back at the year that was and talk about some of our favorite Marvel legends. And like always on the channel, I like to break it down into three categories just to show more legends some love. That's comic, MCU, and builder figures. And if you couldn't tell by the figures on the table today, we are doing one of my favorite lists. It is of course my top 10 Marvel Cinematic Universe Marvel Legends of 2020. Now, the figures on the table are all my honourable mentions. I know, I know, before you jump to the keyboard and say, what zombie cap doing there? He's worthy of being number one in any list of any category. Now, I don't disagree, but let me explain. I have a simple rule for this year's list because we've had so much MCU content. It is as simple as it has to be a live action property. We have been spoiled this year with live action shows after the drought of 2020. Not only did movies return to the cinema, we also got the debut of Disney Plus live action TV shows with WandaVision, Falcon and Winter Soldier, Loki and we ended the year on Hawkeye. And we've got figures for three of those properties already with Hawkeye to come this year. So I want to show some love to more of the live action figures because I don't feel that's something that everyone does on YouTube. So that's what I'm doing today and yes I know what if is technically MCU canon. It's just presented to us in an animated format. I get it, but I think it's an unfair comparison to compare live action figures with animated style figures. It just doesn't sit right for me. So it's my own stupid rule. You don't have to agree with me, but it's my list. So that's what we're doing today. So I'm showing them some love right here at the start. It is, of course, the highly underrated, I think, um, Doctor Strange there. I think he's the sleeper hit of the wave. Of course, Captain Carter, UK repping, obviously one of the best female legends of the year. And then we have Zombie Cap. As I said, worthy of topping any list this year. I'm not going to disagree, but today I wanted to highlight the live action figures. So all the other figures on the table are from live action properties. And again, you see on the left there, we have the Falcon and Winter Soldier. Soldier, probably my favorite Disney Plus show. And the reason that the new Captain America didn't make the list is because his Builder Figure wings were that, a Builder Figure. And also his interchangeable head and his fisted hands were in the two pack. So you had to buy multiple things to create the cap you wanted. So not quite good enough to make the list, but I like Bucky's new haircut. I like that we finally got Baron Zemo as well with the mask and the unmasked look. Next to them, we got uh, Happy Hogan, who was on my wish list for MCU. So I'm very happy to have him, but he is of course just on a normal suited body. Not worthy of making the list, but trust me, happy to have Happy Hogan, pun intended. In front of him, we have the integrated suit Spider-Man. Now after seeing No Way Home, I do have an affection towards that suit. However, the figure didn't really come with anything Anything else. No accessories apart from an interchangeable set of hands. So not quite good enough to make the list, but I do appreciate that design going down in the history books. Trust me, go and watch the film. And then over to the other side, we've got Loki, a lot of people's favorite Disney Plus TV show. And we've got the three main characters with Mobius, Loki, and Sylvie. But the two lads are just wearing suits, not that exciting. And Sylvie is pretty good, but just not quite good enough to make the top 10 list. Then we have, we have Phil Jones, AKA Obadiah Stain. And again, he is great. A figure I definitely wanted for the shelf, just it's not quite good enough to make the top 10 as it is just on a normal Marvel Legends suited body with the pins, difficult to stand, etc. But I like his accessories. Uh, and then behind him, we have the Mark III, who was on my list for top 10 for a little bit, but slowly just got knocked out because I've got a lot of Iron Man figures. And yes, that is the iconic first Iron Man movie, the first time it comes in the red and gold. Just not quite good enough to make my list. I had some fun with some of the other figures. So there you go. There's my honorable mentions, all the figures on the table, okay? So I know you're not going to agree with me straight away because the what if figures ain't included but this is my top 10 live action mcu list of marvel legends for 2021 enjoy
Kicking us off at number 10 is a late entry as I've only just opened this guy up, but that's just testament to how good this is. This is the most accurate Doctor Strange we have in our collection so far. Yes, I know we're due another one this year with the Multiverse of Madness, but currently this Spider-Man No Way Home Doctor Strange is the best Doctor Strange we have. Not only is the likeness the best we have, the Benedict Cumberbatch, he also comes with the funnest accessories with these magic effects, which are now synonymous with the MCU. And I love when you can get a character without you can pose on the shelf not only displaying his abilities but also brings the shelf to life a little bit and that's exactly what this Doctor Strange figure can do but you can call him Steven of course no, that does feel weird. He's right, he's right. But he comes with a great cape. He comes with the Eye of Agamotto still. As I said, the likeness is great. The new pinless arms. Now he's got the pins on the knees, but again, it's hidden under there anyway. And again, it's Doctor Strange. You can pose him like this and he looks a lot of fun. So yeah, this guy essentially knocked off the Iron Man Mark III from the list, which I'm sure some people won't agree with. But I just think posing him on the shelf like this is just too fun not to acknowledge. So yeah, at number 10, Doctor Strange. At number nine, the second person to don the mantle of Captain America within the MCU, it is John Walker from the Falcon and Winter Soldier Disney Plus TV show. Now, not only did I enjoy this character more than I thought I was going to, I also think Hasbro done a great job at putting him in plastic with this first release, which was a Walmart exclusive, which he came in this nice packaging that matched what we seen on the show, which was a nice touch. This guy also came with an interchangeable head, which I've put on this body. Now, this body was just a straight up repaint, but it's not very accurate to the US agent we've seen at the end of the show, which is unfortunate. But this guy is accurate to the Captain America uniform that John Walker wore on the show. It's on a nice pinless body as well. Nice range of motion. He comes with the shield, of course. The only thing that I found annoying is that he had the gun glued into the holster, but that's the usual case, unfortunately, with Legends. So I'll forgive him. This character and figure is definitely worthy of some love, and I'm very curious to see where he goes within the MCU. Let's hope for some Thunderbolts. But as our second Captain America, this is a great representation in plastic. He makes my number nine. And number eight, let's go with Quicksilver. I bet you never seen that coming. And this is what I like to call a gap filler. This was a character we desperately needed in our collections. He was only in Avengers Age of Ultron, but he still had a pivotal part to play. And for whatever reason, the first time around, Hasbro didn't give us anything. We never had Pedro Maximoff on the shelf until now. And the advantages of waiting so long is that we get the advancements in Marvel Legends with this pinless technology and also the nice face printing technology which the likeness is pretty good overall this is a great representation of Pedro Maximoff Quicksilver and we probably wouldn't have got a figure this good if we got him originally in 2015 so I'm glad to finally fill that gap in the collection he was desperately needed Hasbro managed to do that a few times this year with the Infinity Saga lineup he's got a nice range of articulation as well came with an interchangeable set of hands so you can get him in a better running pose but uh, yeah overall decent figure gap filler we needed him and he makes number eight on the list and number seven i'm going with shang chi marvel made their return to the cinema this year and one of those movies was shang chi and the legend of the ten rings introducing us to a whole new corner of the mcu and a whole new cast of characters with shang chi being at the lead of that and we got a nice range of marvel legends as well so they had to be represented in this list somewhere this figure is a great representation unfortunately it has the pins in the arms but other than that the figure is a very nice sculpted figure and a really nice likeness to the character as well this this is undoubtedly Shang-Chi when you put it on a shelf. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited for where he's going to go within the MCU and what other stories we've got to tell now we've had his introduction. And uh, yeah, this is a great representation in plastic. Great range of movement, as you would expect on a martial arts character as well. But again, it's all about that likeness. It is spot on. It's like you have shrunk the man down in plastic. It's a beautiful figure and definitely worthy of being on this list. But for me, it's all about that representation from the new movies, having them on the shelf straight away in plastic and Hasbro didn't let us down. He's there already and uh, yeah, he's already in the top 10 list at number seven. At number six, another important character we needed on our MCU shelves, played by the legendary Anthony Hopkins, debuted in the very first Thor movie. It is of course Thor's father, Odin, who we finally got in plastic this year with the Infinity Saga lineup. And this is a really nice figure. We've got two head sculpts. He comes with his staff. He has a crown that is removable. The likeness is really good as well with his eye patch and his scar and his little beard. Uh, the cape is pretty good, to be fair, drapes over the shoulders. I've seen people already replace that of a soft good cape, which takes him to the next level. And if this figure had soft goods, it could have made the top three at least. But uh, for now, he makes it at number six, just shy of the top five, because it is an important character 
we need it on the shelf and I always love getting those new characters especially important ones added to the collection and Odin is one of them a great figure needed to be in the collection and he makes it here at number six now I interrupt this list to give some quick love to the Marvel Legends eternal figures that as you can see I haven't even took off display but I definitely wanted to give them a mention because I don't think anyone else will these are a great set of figures that I think represent what we've seen on screen very well and you have to give credit where credit's due as Hasbro gave us all 10 Eternals as well as the bad guy before the movie was even released. Yes, the film got delayed, but it's still nice to have them all straight away without having to wait a year or half a year to complete a team. And they are great. And the likenesses to the actors are very good as well. Now, you know, may not like the movie. You may not like these character designs, but you can't take away that these figures are very accurate to what we've seen on screen. So bravo to Hasbro. Definitely a little honorable mention, if you will, but obviously not good enough to be in the top 10. It's been a great great year for MCU and uh, yeah I'm curious to see where these characters go but nice figures worth a mention I thought I'd show them some love back to the list getting into the top five let's start off with Thor himself now this isn't just any Thor this is Fat Thor from the end game final battle and it is definitely a figure we needed in plastic he comes dual wielding with Mjolnir and Stormbreaker both powered up ready to go and yeah this is a great representation of Thor from that final battle you can see his bit of a pot belly there so this is a completely unique sculpt completely pinless as well and uh, yeah I've, I've literally moved that away I've got a cap holding Mjolnir in the final battle and he can wield uh, obviously Stormbreaker. I like the effect pieces as well. Now, the only bugbear about this figure is we only get one head and the head has the powered up eyes. I wish we had got an alternative head with the normal eyes and he still had the sort of uh, Viking beard plait. That would have been amazing. But I don't know. For me, it's just a bugbear that he only has the powered up eyes as I like display options on the shelf. But still, there is no doubt in this is an epic pose of Thor and definitely a version of Thor we needed in plastic to represent that iconic final battle from Endgame. We had Worthy Cap, we got the Iron Man eventually, and now we got Fat Four as well. And yeah, the chainmail is great. The black sort of arm is beautiful. The cape obviously just is a bit hard. And it just sort of just sit there, but it helps him balance a little bit as well, to be fair. Again, another character that would benefit from a soft good cape. I'm sure some people have already done it. But for me, he stands on the shelf like this, powering up Stormbreaker, ready to go. And uh, yeah, this was on my wish list. I needed Thor, and I love the execution from Hasbro. Made it into the top five, that's for sure. Thor from Endgame. Number four, we have our highest ranking female on the list. It is, of course, Scarlet Witch. And she is now actually called Scarlet Witch within the MCU. And she donned this outfit for the first time in WandaVision, of course. And this figure is beautiful. Not only is it the best likeness to Elizabeth Olsen, it's also just the best sort of outfit we have had for Scarlet Witch so far. We got some powered up hand effects and interchangeable normal hands as well. So we have those options as well as these translucent pink pieces that sort of look like she's powering up but again it's all about the likeness the hair scope is flowing a little bit so as you can see I've got her on a flight stand and she looked really good there and she literally posed like this in my display just powering up above our phase four figures so far but yeah this is on a uh, it looked like a pinless body uh, well the legs ain't pinless unfortunately but the arms are and uh yeah this is just a nice fit it's all about that likeness to be fair it's the best Elizabeth Olsen likeness we have had it is the best movie Scarlet Witch or MCU Scarlet Witch of course this was Disney Plus but still they're all part of the same universe and yeah this is just a beautiful figure that you can get into some beautiful poses and it's definitely worthy of being this high on the list as i said my highest ranking female it is of course scarlet witch at number four at number three we are getting into podium places so taking the bronze medal is the guy who looks bronze himself but he is definitely burnt a little bit it is of course a character i didn't think i wanted i didn't think i needed but i'm very happy to have him it is of course Thurda from Thor Ragnarok. Now, this figure obviously is a character we didn't expect to see because on screen, he is portrayed really big and like, it's just one of those guys that you never thought you'd get in plastic. But Hasbro were up to the challenge and the figure they gave us is insane. I love the translucent sort of 
orangey yellow plastic covered with this charcoal-y burnt effect. So as the light hits it, it literally looks like this guy's on fire. Nice roaring mouth with the helmet. He comes with a massive sword that sort of keeps him off balance to be fair. But you can get this guy in some really nice poses considering how big he is. And he scales really well with the Marvel Legends as well. He sort of portrays how we first seen him at the start of the film where he's pretty big but not as big as he is when he's destroying Asgard of course but uh, yeah you have to give credit where credit is due a character definitely we didn't expect from Hasbro one we didn't think they'd even try but they did and they did a great job and he had to be on the podium the only reason he's not a higher on the podium is because it's a character that I wasn't clamoring for if we never got him I don't think I would have missed him too much but now we have I would definitely miss him he's not on display he literally stands there front and center a really tall imposing villain on the shelf that is for sure and uh, yeah get the light hitting him just right and he is unmissable so yeah had to be on the podium worthy of the bronze medal but just because it's Serda I think he got knocked down a few pegs but still worthy of being number one himself an epic figure it is of course Serda and number two, but could have quite easily been number one. He looks silver. He takes home the silver medal. It is, of course, Iron Monga, the first big bad of the MCU, the guy who kicked this all off. Now, this guy came in the Infinity Saga lineup this summer, and uh, it was definitely a gap we had in the collection. It was one that you didn't think Hasbro would execute so well when they eventually got round to it, and my God, did they. This is a beautiful figure. It also came packed with... Obadiah Stane. Now, the only way that it would have been talking to the next level is if you could actually open up the chest and put Ebadiah in there. That would have been next level, but I'll take what we've got because this is still epic. This giant mech looking robot towers above our other Marvel legends, especially Iron Man, who he is compared to on the shelf. And uh, yeah, it's, you forget how big this guy was in the movie and he scales great with the legends uh, on the shelf. And uh, yeah, look at all this sculpt work. Like he actually has working barrels and mechanics and yeah some of them are popped out like but still it still looks really good when you get it working like there's more detail in this guy than we probably deserve or expected look there you go there you go he's got working pistons is what i'm trying to say look at all of this mechanics all down here like as i said this is better than we expected them to do and look at the look at this effect on the hand you've got a blast effect smoke coming out a machine gun you've got bullets that are just slowly dissipating as they come down like this is such a good figure and you such a good range of motion on it as well you can get some really Really nice fighting poses. He's got more cannons on this side. He's got a cannon up there over his shoulder. Nice range on the head. As I said, the only way this guy could have been better if the chest opened up and you could put Obadiah's body in there and he could actually pilot him. But still, I take them both separately. He's the first big bad of the MCU. We needed him on the shelf. This is an epic figure. If you haven't got it, go and get it. And number two, taking the silver medal, Iron Monger. And number one, who else could it be but Iron Man? The Mark 85 armor with the interchangeable Tony Stark head with the best likeness of Robert Downey Jr. that we have got from this iconic moment in Endgame that won't only go down in MCU history, but will go down in cinematic history. For me, it's all about what this figure represents. Once I seen Endgame and came out the cinema, I knew I needed this represented in plastic for display on the shelf. Robert Downey Jr.'s portrayal of Iron Man is is what made the MCU what it is today, let's be honest. And uh, yeah, this epic moment felt so bittersweet because it made sense within the concept of the story, but I was so sad to see Tony Stark go from the MCU. But yeah, this figure is a beautiful representation of that moment. And not only did it come with a beaten up Tony Stark head, as I said, it had a nice Iron Man, Tony Stark, head sculpt, the best likeness to Robert Downey Jr. we have ever got in any Marvel legend. So you have options as well as interchangeable hands so you can have him without the power gauntlet and just have a normal Mark 85 armor. We also got blast effects. We got his shield. We got a, a blade. Like We got more pieces, lots of things to sort of make different versions of the Mark 85 armor. And he unfortunately still have the pins. So there's still a little bit of room for improvement. But for right now, this is definitely the best Mark 85 we have, the best Tony Stark likeness we have in figure form. And again, it's all about what this scene represents to the MCU. So if I'm doing a top 10 MCU list, it doesn't matter what year it is, this has to be number one for 
what it represents for the whole Infinity Saga. And uh, yeah, this figure is beautiful. The best Mark 85 we have, the best Tony Stark face sculpt we have, and lots of accessories to create multiple versions of Iron Man in this armor. And it came in a two pack with a pretty good Thanos as well. So he definitely is worthy. He is my number one Mark 85 Tony Stark Endgame battle scene Iron Man. So there we have it, my top 10 Marvel Legends MCU Marvel Cinematic Universe live action figures of 2021. And please remember, this list is just a little bit of fun. I'm sure absolutely nobody out there will agree with me, but it's still fun to break it down and revisit some of these figures and hear the reasons about why some people loved them and why people didn't. But here are 10 great MCU figures. I'm sure you'll agree with that. But uh, let me know your order. Let me know your top three live action MCU figures in the comments below. I'm sure lots of people are mad at me that I didn't include the what if figures as they are technically canon, but I just lean towards more of a live action. That's how I enjoy my content. I did like what if, but it's all about the live action stuff for me. So these figures are great. They make for an epic display. And as I said, there are 10 great figures here on the shelf. I even gave the Eternals some love and I even gave lots of honorable mentions at the start. There are still more figures I didn't mention this year. That's how good it has been. A great year for MCU in regards to the content we've seen on screen and the figures we got in plastic. But uh, yeah, another reason to talk about them um, is never a bad thing. So let me know your top three live action MCU figures in the comments and go and check out my other lists on the videos tab right now. Check out the playlists, but most importantly, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. You can also hit that join button and become a channel member as well. Quite simply show some love or join the members club. Much, much appreciated. As always, my name is Dan W. You can follow me on Instagram. It's Dan Who. And I'm on Twitter as well at Dan Who Reviews. Tweet me and we'll do this all over again next year. Let's hope that the MCU figures continue strong. And as always, I will see you on the next one.